Hello everyone. Today I'm going to be cleaning my Eheim canister filter for my 45 gallon Amazon Biotope aquarium. Now I've had this aquarium set up for about a year and a half now, but one thing I absolutely despise about this aquarium is that it is the only aquarium in my house that uses a canister filter. I actually got this canister filter for free. It was something that another hobbyist was giving away. And at the time I needed a bunch of filtration for my outdoor pond. So I picked it up and then eventually decided to use it on this tank. And so just to clarify what type of canister filter I have exactly, this is the type 2217 Eheim canister filter. I'm pretty sure this thing has seen its better days. Like if I had to guess, the hobbies I got it from probably had this thing for like at least 10 years. Like when I actually got this canister filter, it didn't even have the little like clip things on the side and I actually had to buy replacement parts for that. Um, oh, see, look, it literally just fell off. It's it's a crusty filter, but you know what? It does the job and that's all that matters. But I know that, especially for beginners, when you start out and you do have a canister filter, these things can be so hard to clean and reset up. And literally like there are just not very good guides online to explain the process of cleaning one. So I really felt like I needed to make a video and maybe this will help you um, in your journey cleaning your own canister filter. I try to make the process as quick and as easy as possible. Before I get started, I will just say whenever I know I have a canister filter cleaning day, I do get towels ready. So I use old like utility towels. They're all ripped up. Just something I can like cover the floor in case any water does spill out. Because oftentimes with canister filters, when you go to clean them, like for example, if this clip pops off and then, you know, suddenly you can have water spewing out of these things. And that's kind of the worst part about cleaning a canister filter is that you just really never know when this thing will decide to just spew water everywhere and it can be hard to control. And you'll also notice that I'm actually sitting on the floor of my house. That's because this aquarium used to be a part of my living room where I had a table on top and then I had another aquarium on top. If you guys follow me on TikTok, you'll remember that setup. I actually took down the table piece that was here and I took down the aquarium that was sitting on top. So now I just have this like really random aquarium sitting on the floor of my home. And to know I have a really old house and so these floors are actually the original wood floors. So it is really important that uh, I have towels ready just to protect them. I have had just as an aquarium owner some water damage and it's just been really, really sad to me personally. So. Before I get started, I'm gonna jump up and go grab those towels. So the number one way I actually know that it's time to clean my canister filter is when I see that the pipes, which are clear plastic, turn black like this. That means that they have been coated with a layer of grime and filth. And typically that means that the inside is also pretty full of grime and filth. So I'm also gonna show you guys how to clean these pipes so that they look brand new which is like probably my favorite part of the whole canister filter cleaning process. Um, but that's kind of how I keep an eye on things. I also set a Google reminder up in my calendar. So I know every like two months ish, more or less, I sit down and I get a reminder on my phone and it says, you need to clean your canister filter. And I just go and do it. Um, sometimes I push that off depending on again, how dark I see these pipes get. Um, but I would just say like, Cancer filters don't really tell you they need to be cleaned. Like that's kind of what's great about them. They can be really quiet and they do a fantastic job and they hold a lot of filth. So these things can go like months to years without being cleaned, which is like kind of scary, but I do not recommend that. I do really suggest like set a reminder on your phone so that way you don't forget about it and that way you do regular maintenance on your aquarium um, and just be good to the fish that you have in your tank. So another thing I do before we get started is I'm gonna take down as many things that are in my way of this canister filter as possible. So I have like a light on this tank. I have uh, the Home Hawk window camera from Panasonic, which if you haven't seen my TikTok on this camera, please, please, please go check it out. This is the coolest camera to watch your fish. Um, so if you're somebody that travels a lot and you wanna keep an eye on your tank, highly, highly recommend this camera. But I'm gonna unplug it because again, I know that this canister filter has a tendency to just kind of explode and do its own thing if I'm not really careful. So I wanna make sure that anything that could get wet is out of the way. Alrighty, so yeah, these pipes are pretty black, um, but I wanted to show you guys, all canister filters come with an inlet pipe that looks like this and an outlet pipe, which is where the water comes out of, that looks like this. And the outlet pipe, just so everyone knows, connects to the top of the canister filter. And that always used to confuse me, so I wanted to show y'all. So I just unplugged the canister filter, and now I'm going to get ready to take the canister filter over to my kitchen sink. I'm gonna close off these valves. Most canister filters have some kind of valve shut off option. And it's super important that you shut off your canister filter, obviously, so that water doesn't spew out, like I mentioned before. So definitely turn off those valves. 
And then I'm gonna place this stuff in a bucket and let any excess water kind of run out before I try to lift it and carry it to my sink. But yeah, you guys can see there's some water dripping out. It just always goes like that. Okay, so now we're at the kitchen sink. I've got my Ikea dish brush and I am disconnecting the metal inlet pipe. And this thing is definitely an interesting shape. It can be kind of hard to get clean. So I run some water through it just to like kind of knock out some of the snails. I also want to show you guys this fantastic must-have aquarium accessory. I would not live without this thing. This is like a bottle brush cleaner on a wire. You can get this thing on Amazon, super cheap. And what you do is you actually take this thing and the metal wire helps you guide it through your canister filter pipes. Oh my gosh, it pulls out the most disgusting stuff, but it's seriously so satisfying. So I'll link one in the description below. You need one. Also, this inlet pipe comes with a little plastic part on the bottom, which is great because I can take it out and I can clean that and then it gives me more access to actually clean the metal pipe itself. So next I'm going to line up this bottom drain piece over my sink and that's because we're going to drain the water out of the canister filter. I'm going to detach the tubing here and then you're going to see all of the water is going to come rushing out of the canister filter, emptying out into my sink. Next, I'm going to clean out the other filthy tubing. So I'm going to detach it from those stop valves that I showed y'all earlier. And then I'm gonna use the same tool, that scrub brush with the wire, and I'm gonna get deep inside the valve and the tubing itself so that it clears out from being all gunked up into a super clean tubing. So that's one part of the tubing, but let's get ready to do the other half of the tubing. So I'm going to disconnect it from the top, pull it off. Sometimes this takes a little bit of strength, but once that's done, I again use my scrubby brush, same process, scrub it out really good. Make sure that tubing gets as clear as possible. And now it's time to do the motor casing. So this is the top of the canister filter. Oftentimes there's a lot of junk that gets built up in the little propeller area, so I like to deep clean that, put some water in the top, empty it out. Okay, so we have most of the parts cleaned and sitting on the other kitchen counter, and now it is time to clean the media, which is all of the sponges and stuff that sit inside of the canister filter. Now, there is a little bit of a controversy with cleaning media. It's not that big of a controversy, but I have received some hate mail in the past for cleaning my sponge media with kitchen tap water. And I want to explain how I do this so that everyone is clear. Your sponge holds millions upon billions, possibly even trillions of little microscopic bacteria. And there is just simply no way to completely 100% clean out that bacteria from your sponge which is actually a good thing because you do need some of that healthy bacteria to keep your filtration system running. What you don't want to do is you don't want to completely like bleach your filter media or like completely nuke all that good bacteria and then you connect it back to your tank and then your tank isn't able to um, cycle correctly and essentially you end up with some kind of ammonia crash because you deep clean your filter media. So when I use tap water, I am just using tap water for convenience. I never 100% deep clean these sponges. In fact, sometimes I will even put one aside so that this one sponge doesn't get cleaned and I can put it back in the canister filter and that'll actually allow the bacterial colony to still survive and live and thrive. So I just wanted to address that because I feel like there's a lot of misconceptions about, oh, you should never clean your filter media with tap water because the chloramines in the tap water will kill your good bacteria, and that is just simply not the case. So the point is, don't overly clean. Leave a little bit of bacteria in your canister filter to pick up and thrive where it left off. But it is important to get rid of like the black filth. Obviously, like that is, that's too much filth. Um, and I'll show you guys what a like sponge that's like partially clean looks like in my mind. Um, and then you can see like roughly how much junk or bacterial gunk I leave left in the canister filter. Another thing that's really important when I do use tap water to clean my filter media is I do not run my tap water on 100% high heat. That's because obviously hotter water will kill more bacteria. So I tend to run my water on a lukewarm setting and that really enables again some of that good bacteria to still thrive within the sponge media itself 
And so when I reconnect my filtration system, there really shouldn't be any issues. And I have been doing this for years. I have never really come across an issue doing it this way. The alternative way that a lot of people say this should be done is you get a bucket of aquarium water and then you rinse your sponge media in that aquarium water because you obviously know the aquarium water isn't going to kill the bacteria. So if you are super stressed or you are just a beginner and you really want to play it extra, extra safe, go ahead and use that, that method. There's nothing wrong with that method. It's just for me personally in my house. I find that cleaning with my kitchen sink is just a lot quicker and more efficient. Hopefully that clears that up. Alrighty, so let's assemble everything and let's snap those little metal clips back onto the canister filter. If any of them have fallen off, this is when I go and I reattach them. It can be kind of a pain, but once they're on, they really do stay put for the most part. And then once I've moved the canister filter back into its place, which is to the right of my aquarium, I start by reconnecting the outlet pipe to the top motor box of the canister filter. I screw that on really tight. You don't want to not screw that tight enough. Water can come gushing out, so do take your time and screw that on well. Then I'm going to grab the second part, which has those stop valves. I'm going to connect that to the bottom of the canister filter, screw that on really, really tight again. Also, this is a great time to make sure that your uh, check valves are actually turned on so that water can flow through. If those are stopped up, when you turn on your canister filter, obviously nothing's gonna work. So just triple check that. Sometimes I forget and then it's like really funny when I realize the obvious. So then I am going to grab my siphon hose and if you don't have one of these, there are other ways to get your canister filter to start. Some of the newer models of canister filters can just be started automatically, which is a great feature. Unfortunately, my Eheim is very crusty and old, so it does not have that feature. So I'm actually going to connect my hand siphon to the inlet pipe. And then I'm going to essentially force water to fill up my canister filter. And then once the canister filter is turned on, it'll pump all of that water out. Then once I have a siphon formed, I am going to connect the inlet tubing. So first I like to start the canister filter and then I'll connect the inlet tubing. It just makes life 1000 times easier. So you'll see here, I am just waiting for the right opportunity. And then I am going to very quickly try to flip the inlet tubing up and over the side of the tank. Whoop, there we go. And now the siphon should still be formed with the canister filter running. So we should be in good shape. I'm also gonna re-put on some of the inlet covers. So that one has some netting on it that I add to protect from snails. And then I put on that little plastic piece I talked about a lot earlier in the video. Okay, so now that we have stuck our hands in the tank and set up the canister filter again, it looks like it is back up and running. The pipes are clear. Now, you may notice your canister filter still makes kind of a grinding noise. It might just be mine because it's really, really old. Hopefully, if yours is newer, it doesn't do this. But just know that that'll probably go away in a couple of hours. Oh, see? It's so finicky. I literally touched it and it made noise. Um, that's just normal and it eventually will catch up with its own kind of suction and output process. So don't stress about that. Now you never want to run a canister filter with no water in it because you will burn out the motor. So do keep that in mind. Don't just like plug in your canister filter. And if you don't get around to setting it up, don't forget to like just leave it running because that could easily kill off your canister filter. Um, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you guys are new to my channel, I'm Nat at Stock My Tank. You can also catch me on TikTok where I post a lot of videos. And I hope if you guys did enjoy, you guys can drop me a thumbs up below or subscribe. Um, and if you guys have any questions, drop them in the comments below. I try to respond to all my comments as well. So if there is anything I can answer, feel free and drop me a comment or a question below. And that is all I have for today. I look forward to making another video for y'all soon. In the meantime, goodbye for now, fish friends.